Hey, this is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So glad that God uh, allowed you and had you to uh, punch on to one of these tidbits right here. Listen, I understand. I do this. I go through the computer looking for somebody who I can believe is truly a servant of God, is truly passing on the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And I find a lot of uh, people that I won't give time to. I, I'm five minutes with them and I just can't seem to get grasp uh, what it is they're trying to do. If I'm trying to do something that's of the flesh of my own self, then I'm trying to do something that's worthless. And there's a billions of other people out here more qualified to do what I'm doing that uh, if you want to say put it in the words of education there are I'm plenty more people more educated but I'm not doing this because I'm educated I'm doing this because I believe in Jesus Christ and because I've studied the Bible some 30 something years and in studying the Bible 30 something years I've came down to a place where I have some knowledge about what faith does for you if you act upon it and follow through with it. At the age of 30, I had to learn how to read. I had to learn how to comprehend reading. I had to learn how to do some things. I still can't spell a lick. And this has been a complete drawback throughout my spiritual life is that I couldn't sit down and actually write out something for somebody. They said, write that down. Well, I can't write it down. I can say it, but I can't write it down. So therefore, that has been a plague, in a sense, big sense of the word, to this person, Peter, here. Now, in, in John chapter 1, 1 through 14, it said, in the beginning, in the beginning, that's the beginning of time. Uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That was Jesus Christ. He said, I was in the beginning. I was the Word. And I'm going to be made flesh, and I'm going to dwell among you. That is this person, Jesus Christ, born from the Holy Spirit out of the, and birthed out of the womb of a woman with a stepfather named Joseph. Joseph had nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ except that he was the provider of the, being the husband of Mary, the mother, that would bear Jesus onto this earth in a human body. Uh, he was wounded for our transgressions in the body. He took in the body, he was wounded. He was bruised. Well, you remember they wounded him and they beat him. And for the chastisement of peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. The stripes that he took were the stripes for you and I. The last three hours that Jesus hung on the cross, the three hours he hung there, he hung there to take the sins and the weight of the world upon him. Our preacher preached a message the other night. How did Jesus die? He said, I believe he bled to death. I do too. I believe he bled to death too of a broken heart, his final blood was the pressure and the weight of taking the sin of the world upon him. And as he did, his heart bursted and he uh, had water and blood come from his side. There are people in the medical world that say if blood comes out of your side when water does, that you have uh, busted your heart vocabulary and the blood has drained down now. Jesus hung on the cross for the sin of the world. You say, you really believe that, Brother Peter? Yes, I believe it enough, so I acted upon it. And by acting upon it, here I am today in a different world. All my friends that I had in the 70s, 72, 73, 74, 75, all those friends that I had that followed the lifestyle that I followed are all dead. All, A-L-L, -L, all dead. I don't know of one right now that I knew 
in 72 that I fraternized with, that I gambled with, that I ran with, I don't know one, not even one of them, I do not know one of them today that's alive, not one. They followed the same pattern I did. Had I kept following that pattern, I would have been dead or in prison or in hell burning forever. Now, listen, Jesus Christ though came. He was the promised Savior. He would, in Genesis 3, 14 and 15, it said, right here, let me read it to you. And the Lord said unto the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. What shall bruise the head of the serpent? The seed that God put in the woman. That seed, God took a seed, a male seed, and put it in a female woman. And he passed that seed down. Study it. Study it. Study the women in the lineage of Jesus Christ that brought the seed down through. God hid it from the devil. God hid that seed so the devil couldn't find it. Do you think he'd be looking for a male seed and a woman? No, he wasn't that smart. You know, he thought he was pretty smart. He said, I'm going to raise myself up to the level of God. He thought he was a pretty smart bird. But he found out that he wasn't. He found out that he wasn't. He wasn't smart as he thought he was. And he isn't today as smart as he thinks he is. And God has already defeated him. He's already defeated both. And, but he's going to try his best to take all he can to hell so that he'll have somebody to persecute. Excuse me. <coughs> he is a persecutor. The devil is a persecutor. He wants people to persecute. He wants to get them in hell where he can persecute them forever. Hell was made for the devil and his angels, not for mankind. The devil and his angels got to have something to do in hell. What are they going to do? They're going to fire up the fires harder and harder under those that they're persecuting. All mankind that goes into hell is an intruder. And when he gets there, he's going to be there. The devil's got to have something to do. And what he's going to do is persecute those souls of those men that he has stole away from the world. Him and his fallen angels are going to have a job in hell. And that job's going to make the fire hotter, make the place more hell for those who have gone there than, uh, than it would be normally. Let's see. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's who Jesus was. He was the death, the burial, and the resurrection. He was the gospel. He did not stay in the grave. He went to the grave, but he didn't see corruption. He went to the grave, but he didn't see corruption. He didn't stay there that first night. He said, three days and three nights will I be in the heart of the earth as Jonah was in the whale's belly. And he did not spend that time. All right, let's, let's read this verse right here in Galatians 3.16. He saith not, and to the seeds as of many, but as of one seed. And he said, to thy seed, which is Christ. Jesus, God did not say to seeds, S, on it. One seed. He said there's going to be one seed, and this seed is going to be the seed that, that is going to come uh, later on in life. And when was Christ was born? And he, Herod, demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. This is, I, again, I'm going to say this at the uh, risk of being uh, repeating myself too many times. I do not understand how anybody could know the Old Testament and stop at Christ and not believe he was the Messiah. Thousands, and literally thousands of prophecies in the Old Testament state exactly where he'd be born. Uh, it states many, many things, everything that happened. 300, some 320 prophecies were fulfilled immediately when Christ was born. And those prophecies, those 320 prophecies are in the Old Testament. How could you 
discard 320 prophecies. How could you discard two or three <laughs> that were accurate? But 320? Look at and and look in uh, uh, 20, chapter 22 of Psalms. Read it. My God, my God. He said, Why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not in the night season. And uh, I silent, but thou art holy, O thou inhabitants, a praise of Israel. Our Father trusted in thee, and trusted, and thou didst deliver them. And he goes on, verse 14. He said, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength dried up like a pot shed, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaw. And thou hast brought me into the dust of the death, for dogs have compassed me. And the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, and they pierced my hands and my feet. This is way back in the book of Psalms, some 3,000 years before Jesus. And this was prophesying him and exactly what happened to him. You can go over to the book of Isaiah. Go over to the book of Isaiah. Look at Isaiah 53. And what do we see in Isaiah 53? It said, For he shall grow up, uh, before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness. And when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. It goes on and talks about, read it, Isaiah 53. And it said he was despised and he was rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And he had, as it were, our faces hid, as it were, our faces from him. And he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief, and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Listen, we still are crucifying Christ today. We who are Christians and do not act on obedient faith of God are as guilty as those men that put him on the cross. We need to act if we're going to say we are Christians, we need to prove that. How do you prove it? You prove it by your actions. If you really believe Jesus is the Messiah, was the Word, died, went to heaven, became the Word again, and you have that Bible in front of you, which is the Word of God, the living Word of God. Do not buy a living Bible. I do not recommend the Bible called the living Bible. I recommend the King James Version. You say, well, Brother Peter, that's a little bit archaic. I don't understand that. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I teach seven. I, I For ten years, I taught seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds. Now I'm teaching 13-year-olds. And do you know that those boys and those kids understood the King James Version perfectly well after they asked Jesus to save them, come in their heart and save their soul? You know why? Because they had the author of the Word in their heart. If you have the author of the Word in your heart, the Holy Spirit, then you ought to be able to understand what you're reading, <laughs> whether it's a little bit archaic or not. And besides that, what's archaic about the King James Version? Can you understand the word thee when it's talking about a person? I'm talking to you, and I would say thee to you or you are the same thing, you and thee, or thou, which is you too. And what the, thee is, is a personal to you, and thou is you again, but in a, in a diff, little different light, but still the same person. And this is where we are. I see, all we like sheep have gone astray. Verse 6. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of all. When I was following the devil, Jesus had already taken the iniquity from me. He had already covered it. He had already shed his blood for it. It was sitting there for me to receive. And it's sitting there for you to receive today. If you have never received Jesus Christ, 
as your personal Savior, you need to do it today. You need to take and put uh, faith in your heart. Say, God, in my heart, I believe I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.